Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Katie Lonight. I am extremely delighted to stand here and inform you on the topic I have researched on. For as long as I can remember, I have never imagined life without jeans. The wearing of jeans have been around for decades. Jeans have been seen worn in Western cowboy movies and other motion pictures in the earlier years up until now. I therefore feel the need to research this topic in order to gain knowledge on something that we might take for granted. My topic is the history and evolution of conventional blue jeans. Jeans today is inevitable, one can even say it is universal as it is seen in every society. I will now start with the history of jeans. Blue jeans was invented in 1973 by Jacob Davis and Levi Strauss. <coughs> Levi jeans was first designed and marketed in 1850 and have been stayed essential in the same ever since. However, Levi did not contain rivets originally until a tailor by the name of Jacob Davis invented riveted pants, who then granted idea of the use of rivets in pants to Strauss. Now, Strauss and Jacob were friends. Levi was the, he was the guy who originally started the whole idea of making jeans but um, Jacob was also a tailor, but his customers normally have problems with, you know, their pockets keep on coming off and stuff like that. And so he was like, I don't know, especially this one customer, he's always coming in, tearing off the pockets of his pants. So he's like, I don't understand why, you no, know, the pockets keep on coming off. So anyway, Jacob now starts, you know, thinking of what he could do to create, to allow the pants, the pockets to stay on the pants. So, he then created the idea of the rivets. Now the rivets, if you look on your jeans pants, you see it right here on the jeans. This is to hold the pockets to the jeans, especially it's now especially at the front of the jeans pants, so because people now only put stuff at the front of your pocket. Okay, let's move on. The original name for blue jeans was called waist overalls. The original name for denim material was search the names or search of names. And this was in <coughs> France. The name you know originated in France. In 1960, the word jeans became popular. The reason for the invention of blue jeans, it was made for sailors and gold miners. It was needed to provide strength and comfort. Denim material was known as work cloth. However, it was also known to be worn casually. Because the material was so strong, they needed it to work with. To work like if you're doing constructions or gold mining, that because the denim material was so strong, they created the pants. So that's why Levi, um, Levi cre um, created all that idea of having, of making jeans pants for work conditions. Blue jeans as a form of rebellion and fashion. You know, the, um, the, um, whatever, even if you plan something good, some evil always presents itself. So right now, um, this, was, this is not anything extreme, but in the 1950s, high school children put them on as a radical way of defining themselves, of wanting to look and be like adults. You know, teenagers always think they're big and want to be big. Be big. Sorry. A decade later, blue jeans became a symbol of egalitarianism, a uniform for adults, baby boomers waging a generational war. war. So, but from dictionary.com, I'll give you an easier term for egalitarianism is a certain resulting from or characterized by the belief in equality of all people, especially <coughs> in political, economic, and social life. So because of the invention of blue jeans, it created uh, the concept of equality among people. In the 1950s, jeans were definitely about being sexy and fashionable, and it's carrying on even today. Now, life before blue jeans. Men, the men clothes, you have the flutteroy suit. It had a detailed lace collar with a smock that hung down past the knee. The Buster Brown suits, this was a smock like suit that had a short smock and bloomer pants above the knee with long stockings. And it was mostly five and eight year olds. Um, boys wear this and a little bit, bit above that age. The coats now, it was like for gentlemen, not only gentlemen wear coats to look fashionable and look, you know, that was the best attire at that point. 
and this was wool evening tail coat or double breasted suits and they will wear it with top hats. The court dressing now was a formal style for men, consists of short tail jackets, riding hats, vests, and boots. This was the outfit to wear when riding, riding a horse. But now if you, you know, go to Texas, you see the cowboys with jeans pants, and of course their cowboy hats to go along with it. On the other hand, we have the female clothes. Right here you have the corset. Now this was uh, a garment that was used to give shape and weight and, and hips to females. But this had health problems because um, younger girls normally wear the corset. It's kind of, and you know they're growing and you know they have the buzz and all of that. It's created <coughs> the organs because they wear the cor corset and it was so tight. The organs start to squish <coughs> together and it created um, bleeding. So, and you know, wearing pants, you don't need that. The bodice now, you had, <coughs> yeah, that, it was the upper part of the gown with the shirts permanently on the waist line. And then we move on to <coughs> the stockings. Now, we're made, the stockings were made of either knitted wool, linen, cotton, or silk. This was held up by the ribbon-like underwear tied up above the knee. Now, if, if you have the stockings was the long, you know you have the stockings, I don't know if you have a like, go to see strippers or anything like that, <laughs> you, where you yeah, have the stocking each other to the underwear, so it was something like that. So the stomacher was, um, this was a separate decorative triangle shaped part, so this right here, would be the stomacher, right there would be the stomacher. And um, and it was either stitched look or straight pin <coughs> to the bodies of the gown. So right here, that little part right there, that is the stomacher. And <coughs> lastly, we have the, um, the petticoat, and this was a skirt worn beneath the gown. Now we move on to the manufacturing process <coughs> of blue jeans. Yes, yeah, so the manufacturing process of blue jeans right here, you have the cording and the spinning. Now, the cording was where they get the cut, the, the, the cotton is being clean and straightened out right here. And then it's sent to the spinning where it is, um, the spinning machine twists the cotton into yarn. Right here, it's preparing the yarn, you have the dyeing and the weaving. The dyeing now is where the, the blue, the blue, the cotton is being dyed in blue. And so when you wash your pants, you normally see it get duller or whatever. And this was because they dyed the material first. So, you know, you keep on running out when you wash your blue jeans. And then you have the weaving was where the blue, the blue thread and the white thread will weave together. But you normally see the blue, the blue thread more. It was more dominant because it was closer together than the white thread. <coughs> then you have, yeah, so you know, yeah. <coughs> then you have cutting the, cutting the material. This is where the, the material, after you know, the old weaving and the dyeing and all of that, it's been cut into pieces to make the, the pants and voila, the end result. Okay, lastly, I would like to leave you with some interesting facts that you will find intriguing about blue jeans. May the 20th of every year is considered to be the official birthday of blue jeans. 215 jeans can be made only with one bale of cotton. When purchasing a clothing garment like jeans, more than half of the money goes to the people <coughs> who sell it, only 12% goes to the manufacturers. Every American owns an average of seven okay. pair of wearable jeans. And nearly all jeans are stitched together in hundreds of thousands of low-wage sweatshops and private homes around the world. In, clothing, in closing, the invention of blue jeans is a success as it is even <coughs> necessary in today's society. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you.